Hi everyone, it's Cherie from 12 by 12 Cardstock Shop and today I'm bringing a piece called Valentine Stamps Leroy from CadoodleBugDesigns.com. He is dry pieced together, meaning that he's not glued down. I do this just to one, ensure that I have all of the pieces and two, that I am happy with my choice of colors. Now that I'm removing all these pieces, you'll see my markings. This makes it easier for me to line everything up and ensure that there's no gaps so you don't see the base protruding through anything. Now, I did import him into Cricut Design Space and I resized the width to 7.5, which auto adjusted the height to 10.438. And I was showing there, I did go around my base. You can use Copic, Prismacolor, Spectrum Noir markers. I go around the base with the color of piece that's going to lay on top of it, just in case I put it against another dark page or background, you're gonna see a white base or a peach base, a lighter color base from behind since it is the same size. And that's how I hide my edges. All of my supplies and paper came from 12 by 12 cardstock shop. The bare color here is caramel and you're gonna start with his legs. It's by American Crafts. The inner ear pads is the color latte by American Crafts. My stamps in the red is crimson by American Crafts. And then I used black textured cardstock for the nose and I went over it with some Nouveau glaze drops or Nouveau drops with black glitter. After his legs are on you're going to put his arms on and there are little divots where the fur on the shoulders is that they line up and that's part of why I marked it because I, I didn't want to put them too high or too low where you could see the base in between the body and the arms. After his arms are glued down, then you will pick up the body and the body goes on next. And my little black chalk pencil is just how I knew where to line it up to make sure that you could not see anything that you weren't supposed to see. Here I picked up the hat and realized I didn't need that yet. I needed the head first. And it's going to lay over the top of the body and the cheeks line up with the actual base. The reason we're doing a gnome today is because we have to, as creators, try to include everybody and I want to get more beginners comfortable with scrapbooking. I know that having done it for 20 years, we think everybody is going to be able to keep up and it's not as easy as it looks sometimes to new people. Here, the um, pattern did show that the muzzle was that latte color. I didn't want it the same color. I, it just blended in too much for me, and I wanted it to be the same color as the bear and the caramel. So I just showed that that's the color that was on the actual finished pattern, and I changed it. So the big muzzle goes down, and... Um, I'm waiting for that to dry and I'm going to then glue his ears and the ear pads down. Chalk the blush onto his cheeks and then put the next muzzle piece down. But as I was saying, we want to include a lot of new people to scrapbooking. And eyes can be very intimidating, let alone eyelashes. Gnomes are an easy way to start because you don't have to fuss with any eyes and eyelashes and details because that does take a very long time and it takes a long time to learn, a long time to get better. I still make mistakes and I've been doing this for years. So the gnome just doesn't have a focus on eyes and I figured what better, whether you scrapbook or card make or you just collect them, you make them and collect them. You can use them on memory decks cards, index cards, recipe cards, Rolodex cards. It's it's really endless what you can do with completed pieces. Bookmarks. Uh, borders for your scrapbook pages. Now, that's just showing that um, I used um, chalk to blush my cheeks. I did not use ink. I made those chalk colors out of leftover chalks. I blended up with the Ninja into a dust and I... <clears throat> poured alcohol, rubbing alcohol into it, 
where it was a thick paste, not runny, put a paper towel down and push the paper towel in with a quarter and pull the paper towel off, let it dry for 24 to 48 hours. It works on makeup as well, your uh, pressed powder palettes. I learned that trick from my grandmother. Eyeshadow also. All right, moving on. After you got his head down with his ears, his inner ear pads, his both of his muzzles, then the hat gets glued down and the brim follows. This is a very easy pattern, even though you have a lot of pieces. Just take your time. I know that some of us have been doing it forever and we could paper piece in our sleep. But for the new people, take your time. Don't be in a hurry. You can dry piece like I did. That's why I showed you guys that little trick. And with the marking, and I just use a black chalk pencil, but you could use a pencil or a colored pencil or even a pen because nobody will see it. Um, after you get the brim on, then I'm going to do the, the stamps, the back of the stamps, which is in the crimson. That hat color, the dark, deep, deep red, I don't know if 12 by 12 Cardstock Shop has it. Actually, I'll look while I'm doing the voiceover. That was by Basil in the color pomegranate, and I've had some of my papers for a long time. I try to use stuff that is new, but sometimes we go into our stash and... It's just, we grab it and we move on. And 12 by 12 Cardstock Shop does have that really deep red um, in the color Pomegranate by Basil. Go ahead and grab it. You will use it a lot more than you think. Um, it's on sale for $17.99 for a 25 pack. A single sheet is on sale for 90 cents. I use it for Christmas, Valentine's, summer, 4th of July, I use both of them, and I do sometimes want a, um, my reds to differentiate from each other, not just from the inks. I want them visibly different, and I've noticed that instead of trying to make one lighter edged, um, inked edged, and one darker inked edge, it was just a lot easier to have two different color reds. Now what I'm doing here is I'm showing those that don't ink their edges and chalk. You're gonna take your, your chalked piece of paper, flip it over onto a white piece of paper. I just had sticky notes. Put another piece of paper over it and then you're gonna take a metal spoon with some pressure and go in circular motions around the entire piece, the edges. That sets the chalk in so it doesn't leave the chalky mess all over your protective sleeves in your scrapbook. I've been doing this for over 20 years. My mom got me started on it because I had a NICU baby, Brianna. And I'm here explaining when you use inks that if you're new and you want to start inking, just cut out a bunch of one inch squares, probably 25 of them on white cardstock and go around them. Start with Memento and Tim Holtz inks and finger daubers. Don't use your dauber or don't use your ink pads on your paper. It will ruin them. Use finger daubers. You're going to go through finger daubers as they don't last a long, long time. I get good use out of mine and trim down the pieces that break away, but they do end up in the garbage. I do get large amounts of disposable daubers um, from Amazon, but I also pick them up from uh, Michael's and Joanne's using the 40% off coupon. Now for all those people that got that glitter pack because I said to do it, no regrets. I will incorporate glitter into everything if I can, but I want to make sure that you guys don't buy something and only use it one time. I used it on all my letters and I have no regrets. The pattern did show a lighter pink. I cut it out in the lighter pink. I didn't like it, so I changed it to the darker pink, which I, I love the color combination. The nose is shiny because I used the Nouveau Drops, the black glitter one. Um, I think it's Midnight Sky, but the black glitter paper will work great there. So after you got all your stamps and your letters on, then your nose and the heart on the hat 
the last part is the hands, but watch the hands because the larger little um, curve goes to the outside. Otherwise, you'll see the base pattern in here. You can't even see my base pattern, and that's why I ink my edges. That weird looking black thing that just rolled around, that's an eraser. I got it from Hobby Lobby. Now, here is where I stood up to grab this piece of paper. It came from Doodle Bug. Actually, it came from 12 by 12 cardstock shop, but it's a Doodle Bug pack. And it is called Seasons, and I absolutely love it. It has so many papers in there. They're all double side cardstock, and they are very, very thick. Um, the Seasons pack is on sale right now for $28.49, but it has. I know we all have pictures of us baking, whether it's with kids, grandkids, or ourselves, or significant others. Um, I am going to aim to just show you guys the paper that I'm going to try to use each month. The hearts are for February, but then I have my little St. Patty's Day already in the pack for next month. So go check that out. You'll love the pack. I bought two of them. Um, thanks for watching. Any questions, leave it in the comments below. One of us will get back to you. And I do have more videos of more detailed things on my YouTube, which is Paper Pieces and Leftovers.